Thank you so much. Coming up, Dr. Zudi Jasser, uh, founder of American Islamic Forum for Democracy. We'll talk to him coming up. We looked to our left side and it was a big explosion. I ran straight on and uh, it was like 20 centimeters of me. It was a, a big explosion, the second one. I fell a, uh, a bit away. I thought I was, I was hurt, I was uh, hit. We're taking, in, uh, we're taking in people without real documentation. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know what they're, what, you know, we don't know where they're from, who they are. You look at them and look at it from any standpoint. They could be ISIS, they could be ISIS related. And, uh, you know, you, we just don't learn. We don't learn. You are listening to The Laura Ingram Show, 855-40-LAURA. Uh, the news out of Brussels gets worse and worse. Now there are as many as 170-plus injured. Some injuries are apparently, according to the BBC, horrific. Um, body parts, uh, people have lost their eyes, burned. Uh, 34 so far dead, and that number is likely to go up. Uh, ISIS claiming, uh, uh, well, they're not officially claiming responsibility yet, but celebrating in social media. Uh, joining us now, I'm delighted he's with us, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Everyone sees him on Fox, but he's the founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He's a Muslim who has also been so powerful in his, uh, you know, in his call for reform and understanding of the threats posed from within Islam. Uh, to the West, and specifically uh, toward the soft targets in places like Brussels and Paris, Hamburg, and of course here in the United States. And he's just been phenomenal on Fox over the last few hours during the uh, the immediate aftermath of these attacks in Brussels. Dr. Josser, it's great to have you on again. How are you, sir? Oh, it's great to be with you, Laura. I'm sorry it's in these circumstances, uh, but uh, you're also a voice of reason, so thank you for having me. It's uh, abs- absolutely. Let's let's talk about um, what Europe is learning and not learning in the aftermath of yet another horrific terror attack. Two attacks, one first at the airport and then another at a subway uh, station. And this is the telltale signs of ISIS with, with authorities rushing to one scene only to have another explosion at another. Uh, what is Europe um, still not uh, understanding about the threat posed from within? Well, they're really not understanding the fact that uh, this is an ideology that is threatening them, that a, a, an individual like Abdus Salam does not hide from uh, uh, the entire security apparatus of the EU in the same neighborhood from which they were looking initially and had raided hundreds of homes and unable to find him until they found a fingerprint, not from any human intelligence, from fingerprints was how they found him. Mm-hmm. So therefore, they're not learning that the the ideology is not just about wearing weapons and violent extremism, as we're still even in America calling it. It's about violent Islamism, that there are circles of influence of this ideology that at the end of the road is about militancy. But in the field of, of play of operational ISIS acts and Islamism, there is those in the stadium cheering them on. There's those at home watching them on TV and cheering that on. There are circles of community support that they are not countering. Just like in the Cold War, we countered not only Soviet militancy, but all communism around the world, we realized in the West was a threat. We are not identifying Islamism, and Europe is seeing this firsthand and we continue to, to harbor under this strategy of a whack-a-mole program. Well, and when I think we have the soundbite, uh, when, when something like this happens, when, when San Bernardino happened and we found out that the newly betrothed, and I'm, I'm not even going to say her name and I'm glad I've forgotten it, uh, who came into the country from the Middle East, turns out the information she gave on her visa application as a spouse, she got a special type of visa to be able to come into the United States as a, as a new spouse, the information she gave on her visa form, Dr. Josser, was fraudulent. The address that she presented on her application actually did not exist. So we, we before people start talking about, oh, we're gonna we're gonna extend the perimeter of our airport, so now everyone has to go through metal detectors to even get into a terminal. You can't drop off at the terminal. That's what they have right now in Moscow. You can't you can't actually drop off at the airport. You have to drop out off at a satellite parking lot. Um, before we do any of that, it would be nice if we actually stop the madness at points of entry into the United States. But as we can see, we're just waving people in. Oh, 
and, and we need a 12-step program, and we're not even past the first step of denial that uh, uh, many of these, of my co-religionists uh, are coming in, uh, some of whom are like my family, trying to be free and seek freedom, but many of whom are, are hijacking that openness of our borders in order to facilitate uh, dividing and destroying us from within. And it wasn't a surprise that the San Bernardino uh, um, liars uh, who came in uh, on that program, within 30 minutes we're talking to CARE and doing press conferences after the right. attack. Now, how does that individual work so closely with radical uh, political Islamist groups in America? They're swimming in the same pools. They may not be violent and, and preaching jihadism per se, but they're swimming in that same anti-Americanism, anti-Semitic cesspool of ideology. And until we start to confront that and begin to have a long-term strategy about uh, separating out Muslims that believe in reform for secularism, for equal rights of men and women, the mosque that the president went to just uh, uh, two months ago was a mosque that believes in gender apartheid, that believes in the same Salafi, jihadi-type apologetics, and yet this is the one he highlighted, I think, in almost a bigotry of low expectations for my community as being the, the, the epitome of freedom in America, when in fact that's how these Muslims are being radicalized. This is what Ibrahim Hooper of CARE said after the San Bernardino uh, terrorist attack. Let's listen. We are watchful of people who endorse intolerance, bigotry, xenophobia, and Islamophobia. And this is the very... This is very consistent with Islam. Instead of uplifting these realities, Trump has told every child and teacher in America that their, their Muslim classmates religion hates them. How does this solve the issue of bullying in America? So, Ibrahim Hooper is blaming the guy, <clears throat> excuse me, who hasn't been involved in politics ever until this political election season, and he's the problem. He's creating xenophobia and by the way, America is bullying Muslims. I mean, that's, that is the response from Ibrahim Hooper. Routinely, every time something like this happens, uh, your reaction? My, it's, Laura, it's simple. These guys make a living off of uh, uh, radicalizing our community. They make a living, and, and uh, their, their reason for existence is basically putting us in a siege mentality that Muslims are victims, that America hates us, that the West is anti-Islamic that they won't exist if that mantra, that meme goes away. And, and yet in the Middle East, you see millions protesting the brotherhood. You see, you see so many movements and the Green Revolution in Iran against the theocrats, and yet they, they prey here in this country off the ignorance of Americans that don't understand political Islamic groups that want to make Islam as a movement into a, a, a racialization of our, of our faith, and rather than being an idea, being a, a, a race, which it's not. So they don't want to deal with reform here, so they pretend it's all about bigotry, and it's not. And I hope America can begin to, to be educated that Islam has a, a huge civil war going on within its house that's about reform, that's about pushing back against theocracy, and we have to stop the political correctness that gives the mantle, the microphone to these radical groups. There's a group in Belgium called Sharia for Belgium that radicalized so many that have been convicted now of terror and yet it still exists without really any criticism. And it's time to start calling these groups out for just actually they are the ones destroying our faith, not Americans that are wanting to be secure and free. And you, know, you, you would love this, Dr. Jasser. We're talking to um, Dr. Zudi Jasser from the Amer American Islamic Forum for Democracy. You would love this. So the guy who drops me off, the Uber driver uh, today uh, at, at, at Fox, I always like to talk to the drivers, right? He was from North Africa. He's been here for 11 years, American citizen. I said, who are you voting for? He said, Trump. I said, I said what? He said, the, the people who are coming into this country now from from all over are not interested for the most part in being Americans. They're interested in imposing their worldview on this country. And he was so articulate. I said, what, do you watch? What do you read? He said, I watch CNN and I watch Fox. I watch both. And he said, I read everything. I'm a proud Muslim. And much, much of what's happening and in coming into this country now is separatism. 
He said, I live in New York. We're a melting, melting pot. But this is separatism. Oh, he was going on and on. It was unbelievable. I was like, I want you on the show today. Not, no offense, Dr. Jasser, but I was like, uh, uh, Dr. Jasser, but I was like, oh my gosh, I hear this all the time from people who are Muslim who've been in the country for a decade plus, don't like what's happening with, with the people going to fight for Al Shabaab, with the people making excuses for, uh, for radicalization. Uh, and so just like Jesse Jackson doesn't represent all uh, African Americans or, or uh, Al Sharpton, same deal with CARE. They've just co-opted the entire Muslim, you know, thought leadership, and they don't necessarily represent a lot of the, you know, workaday Muslims who are just here and, and working and living and proudly. Amen. And I can't uh, tell you how much that resonates with our work. I mean, our Muslim reform movement has formed now 14, 15 organizations in the U.S., Canada, and Europe. It's awesome. We signed a two. We signed a two-page declaration that we call. We've mailed it to the mosques. We haven't heard from many of them. Why? Because they don't want to acknowledge that it's not about <laughs> violence and terrorism. It's about uh, believing in secular governance, believing in the equality of men and women, condemning openly any and all caliphates and Islamic states. But yet they don't want to be called on their ideas, and they want to continue to hijack our community for their own uh, political empowerment uh, as uh, uh, victimizers, if you will. And I think Mr. Trump, you know, feeds uh, in some way he, he is, uh, um, you know, responding to the uh, fears of Americans, which is true, that we are too politically correct. And I hope we can thread the needle, though, and realize that Muslims also are a big part of this solution to push back against the theocrats all over the world. And aren't you an apostate, though, for those <laughs> who believe in... In this in this caliphate and 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 I know Islam in and I'm not an expert in the Quran obviously but but they will cite chapter and verse portions of the Quran that mandate that the caliphate is the ultimate goal. I mean they they say you're not the the devout Muslim that they are. They're they're using you know you know obviously terrorist means to get their way, but they're saying they're more Muslim than people like you are. Oh, and 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 Laura. That's called tekfirism, where you call another Muslim a non-Muslim, and the Baghdadis, the <laughs> ISIS of the world, will, will black and white say, I'm not a Muslim. But what the CARES and the Islamic Society in North America do, they put out what I call sort of a quasi tekfirism where they say, well, Jasser's sort of a, a house Muslim, or he's, you know, sort of this, they, they, uh, there was a Vox.com piece that said, we are the anti-Muslim Muslims in our reform movement. Now, what the heck that means? Actually, I would tell you from a tough love perspective, we love our faith a lot more than they do because we're not in denial. We, we are actually not the blasphemers. They are. This is the same battle that most faiths have gone through through any reform. Mm. And I think Americans need to start taking sides within the House of Islam instead of just saying it's all Islam or none of Islam. Mm -hmm. We have to go down the middle and say Islam has a problem within its house, and we need to take the sides of those who share our values in the West and reject those who are not wanting to accept Western values of freedom. Uh, Dr. Zudi Josser, it is always so great to have you on, and I'm sure we'll check back with you later in the week. But thanks so much for spending uh, some time with us today. We really appreciate it. Anytime. God bless. Thanks. Uh